Next up, we have Roger Newton, who's the founder of Espirita Therapeutics. Uh, Roger has worked over 40 years in the pharmaceutical and biotech life sciences industries uh, and has been just a tremendous entrepreneur here in the Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County region. He was formerly the executive chairman and founder of Aspirian Therapeutics. Uh, and there, Roger is most known for his role at Pfizer, where he co-discovered the most prescribed cholesterol-reducing drug, drug in the world, Lipitor. So, Roger, welcome to the stage. Good morning, everybody. Great to be back in Ann Arbor and uh, see some of my old friends uh, and all the science that I was doing here for 40 years in two pharmaceutical companies and two biotech companies. This all started because I decided after my postdoc at, in San Diego that I wanted to actually go and find a new way of treating atherosclerosis and heart disease. And people there said to me, why are you going to a second-rate pharmaceutical company in the Midwest? And I said, I wanted the opportunity to discover a safe and effective drug to treat and prevent cardiovascular disease, the number one killer of people. So what I did is I got a job at Warner Lambert Park Davis. There I was for 17 years. I had, uh, we discovered the molecule after nine years of screening and eight years of development. So it takes a long time to get a drug like Lipitor to the marketplace. And therefore, I was called the co-discoverer and product champion of Lipitor. Lipitor was, uh, the NDA was filed in, in June of 2006, uh, pardon me, 1996. And it was also approved quickly by the FDA just six months afterwards. And then the launch occurred in February of 1997. I worked on this drug religiously. I was here oftentimes 24 hours a day working uh, at the lab. I walked in one day and I was demoted. I lost my position, I lost my team, and I was totally dumbfounded by what had happened that particular day. However, what I did do was go to see Bob Quinn at the University of Michigan. I was in Borders Bookstore in the, help, in the Help Me section, and I came across this book when I knocked it over in an aisle, and it said, don't let your company kill you. And I said to myself, oh my God, what, this, what does this mean? Don't let your company kill you. I turned over the, the book and looked at what was on the front leaflet, Deep Change, Discovering the Leader Within, Bob Quinn, and I called him up twice and uh, didn't get to him, and he followed up with a call, and we had two luncheons uh, that went for about three or four hours. The first luncheon, he listened to what I was downtrodden. Why was I so downtrodden? Because I had spent all this time working on Lipitor, and look what happened. The, the second time, he actually is a psychologist as well. He turned me upside down a few times and wanted to know whether I was ready to go on and do something new and, and leave uh, my work at Warner Lambert Park Davis. So, the search and rescue. Um, I definitely don't want to work for pharma. That's what I said to myself. I've already been there. There's too much politics. I want to work on something that's smaller, more efficient. And indeed, what happened, two years later, um, a VC called me up and said, I've got this really great technology. And this technology basically blends with what you've been doing with LDL cholesterol reduction. This is the good cholesterol particle, the HDL that we're going to work on. So what I decided with having worked with this gentleman for about six months, getting money, wanting to start this company, I went into and saw the drug discovery leadership at Park Davis with three of my very, very good friends who had worked with me for years at uh, Warner Lambert Park Davis, and I basically said, we're leaving. He said, you can't leave. You went out with a sales force, and in, in 11, 12 months, you almost had a billion dollars of sales. You can't leave. We need you. And I said, you know what? My time is done. I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. It's time to move on. And I said, the door is not locked from the inside out. So this is the company we started, 
Asperion Therapeutics. Bob Quinn talked to me about the importance of having something meaningful and purposeful in, your, in the name of the company. And clearly, esprit de corps is absolutely essential in building teams that are, that are, that are really working hard and, 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 and making discoveries. Esperance, hope. Hope, hope that patients can be benefited by the discoveries that we make and the drugs that we have. And ION is something where you're working hard, you're progressing, you have a process that you're doing, and indeed, Asperion Therapeutics wanted to have a pathway to better health and a pathway to new medicines. So this is the solution for Asperion. HDL therapy. Produce synthetic HDLs that you infuse into the blood that then will remove the bad cholesterol in that loaded cholesterol already that you see there and gradually get more and more cholesterol within this particle, transport it to the liver, and then eliminate it as waste as in your stool. And you can see what can happen. You can actually make an old vessel look like a new vessel. This is one thing that I kept on telling my colleagues. Don't watch the stock market, and you can see why. We went and did our IPO at $9 a share in the year 2000. It went up very well to as a high of 38, and unfortunately, with the consequences of 9-11, it dropped to $3 a share. The hedge funds had a heyday, and this is something you don't watch as, a, as a, uh, somebody in the company. You just forget about it for a while and then move on. So what happened was, Asperion was bought by Pfizer for $1.3 billion, which at that time was one of the largest uh, purchases in this area. Uh, unfortunately, in 2007, Pfizer closed. All the R&D in Ann Arbor that was being done was owned by Pfizer, and they closed us down. So that was really an opportunity for me to really go and start another company called Desperion Therapeutics, and it was something beyond statins. Something at this wonderful innovation center that was created as a result of Pfizer leaving the area. And what I had the opportunity to do is negotiate with Pfizer to get back patents and also get back the name Asperion uh, for a second time. What was the issue with statins? Now, many of you in this audience, I'm sure, have had a statin and I think you may have realized that, depending upon the dose, you may have muscle pain, muscle weakness, myalgia or myositis. And clearly this is something where there's a serious muscle breakdown. And I had friends of mine calling me saying, my LDL cholesterol is as low as it's ever been, but I can't play tennis, I can't play golf. What have you created? And I just had to say, I'm sorry, uh, there's nothing I can do about that because in the clinical studies, we didn't have anybody who had uh, any kind of inflammation that may have caused some of the pain in the muscle. This is the Michigan Life Science and Innovation Center that a number of people worked with. This is where originally Asperion had its, uh, had its offices. What happened is when Pfizer came in, people were, we were absolutely just devastated by the fact that they came and they went. So what are we gonna do? Well, you can see all the groups that were part of uh, putting this Science, the Science and Innovation Center together. You can see it, Ann Arbor Spark, MEDC, Wayne County, local organizations, private funding, the governor's office as well. And indeed it opened May 1st, 2008, and Asperion 2.0 was one of those companies in there of one of the few companies from uh, the uh, ex-Pfizer people to set up shop, and this has been going for about 12 years now, and there's over 40 companies that have actually started here and thrived here. So here's the problem with statins, I showed you. What could we do in Asperian 2.0 to do something beyond statins? Well, we wanted to find a safe compound that doesn't damage muscle or any other tissue, have an LDL cholesterol lowering like you have with, uh, with statins, may also improve inflammation, diabetes, and fatty liver. These compounds we worked on for 12 years and it was finally approved by the FDA in 2020. And now there's a, what's called the Global Clear Study in over 4,000 patients around the world trying to see if there's even improvement on, uh, on the uh, 
incidence of cardiovascular disease. Here's again, you have the situation with a stock. Don't watch it closely. Because see what happens here with hedge funds? Um, you can see what happens with, they write, they write them up, they write them down. They write them up, they write them down. And you can see that the IPO price in 2013 is 14. Yesterday, the low, the 52-week low was $9.99. The pandemic obviously really influenced some of these, uh, these values for our stock. So what I want to leave with you, the triumph of innovation in life sciences lies appropriately in financing R&D companies with a meaningful and safe, effective drug to satisfy an unmet medical need. Before I close, I want to show uh, and bring to your um, attention that Cranes had a Detroit business, uh, in, on, it was on September 6th, and the story is called A Success Story. And here are the people that helped make that a success. Some of you may be in the audience, some of you recognize some of these wonderful people. This is the, this is the group of people who came together and made things happen so that we could ensure that we have a vibrant drug discovery tech organization in this area to thrive and to change people's lives. Thank you very much.